Welcome to Movie Mayhem here at Superior Works Cinema, where we watch all the movies. Alright, today we're starting our series on Michel Suave. I'm um, gonna start with Delamore to Delamore. Um, I have a laser disc of that up there somewhere. Uh, this is the, um, I don't know, Digi Super Book release. Came with the soundtrack. It's got uh, some cards. Very, very pretty, uh, very pretty book. It's got it redone in 3D, which is totally useless. I don't know. I, I think that's dumb. But I absolutely love this film. So I'm, I'm very happy I got this cool little, uh, cool, cool version. Um, Michel Suave was one of the, uh, I mean, he was an actor, of course, uh, in several various films from Argento and Bava. Um, he was the assistant director to Argento, as well as Terry Gilliam. Uh, if you even on Baron Munchausen, he was actually the the, uh, the assistant director. So, kind of kind of neat that he had he has a very strong background with some excellent filmmakers. And he you know he went on to start his own career. Uh, you know his he did uh, stage fright, the church, and the sect La Sieta before before this movie. This is the first one he did without any involvement from Argento or or, or the family, kind of on his own. And interestingly, it was also the last one he did for a very long time. He went into retirement shortly after this. Uh, and if, if so, if what I've read about it is something, um, his his kid was sick, and so he just wanted to focus on helping his kid. So he quit making movies for quite a while, actually. I mean, not I don't think it was a full decade, but it was right around there. And then he came back, and he's done. Um, he did several. Um, political thrillers, but all, I mean, all he's done since, since this is TV movies. They're not bad. They're actually quite good. Uh, they're either like historical drama or, uh, political type thrillers. I mean, of course they're all like, you know, four hours long because they're TV miniseries, but they're, they're still very good. Uh, he doesn't have the style. Again, he's shooting for TV. Extremely low budgets. You know, he's not going to be as fancy, but this film, Delamorte Delamorte. Um, of death and of love. This uh, uh, has Rupert Everett as... <laughs> oh, Dylan Dog is the uh, original comic, and they did try to make a movie of that, which I still haven't seen. Never will. Don't care. It just looks stupid. But this <laughs> is... The first time I saw this film was in Italian only. Um, and visually, it, it's, it's a stunning stunning film. I, I would put this as one of the, the masterpieces of visual cinema. I, the the cemetery, the ossuary scene, the the silken uh, thing when it falls over her face and the, the way the breath moves, the fireflies make no sense, whatever. The, it, it's so beautiful. This is a film that I can watch over and over and just enjoy it for the sheer visual aspect. The sound design. I love the music throughout the film. It sets the tone perfectly. Sets the emotion perfectly. Um, it. it I, I don't know. There's one song. If you happen to know the song, it's a. It's like some kind of dance song. He's listening to um, before the Boy Scouts start walking to the house. It's not on the soundtrack. It's some kind of like, you know, I, I'm thinking like a. Euro dance, Euro pop song. Um, if anybody knows what that is, please tell me. I've been searching for literally since this film came out to find what the hell that song was. I can't find it listed in the credits anywhere or any internet source. So if you happen to know it, tell me. Um, so outside of that, I mean, the story is of the engineer. He's a mortician who basically kills the zombies as they, they come back from the dead. And his job is to kill them and kind of keep it covered up under, under government wraps. Sounds basic. It the thing is, it's not a horror film, but it's not a comedy. This isn't like Return of the Living Dead. It's a existential uh, thesis on mankind's relationship with the world at whole. And and I, again, that sounds really pretentious, but it really is. And the way it's delivered, the 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 sarcasm with some of the things and the, the offbeat humor and the ending, of course. I won't spoil the ending just in case you haven't seen the film, but I find the ending to be absolutely fantastic. I mean, it, it to me, it this is one of those films that I, I, 
I believe, and for me, is absolutely perfect. There's nothing wrong with this film. It's phenomenal on every level and speaks to me every time I watch it. But, you know, there's some hilarious scenes, like with the, the, the zombie bikers eating the girl, and she's like, she says, I forget exactly what the words, and she says, I will be eaten by whomever I please. You know, <laughs> what? You're trying to understand, like, wait, what's real in this film? And that's kind of, I think the ending helps with that, but um, what's her face? This Falchi, Anna Falchi comes back three times as three different characters it, it it almost makes no sense but at the same time makes plenty of sense although you're not sure is it Del Morey's in you know is he crazy or what and, and it kind of doesn't really answer that question other than the fact that it's my my answer to the end of this film after watching it is huh so he lives within his own little world and his own little world is kind of like his own personal hell and but at the same time it's all irrelevant because he's nothing more than a a, a toy in the grand scheme of things and I, <laughs> it sounds very nihilistic too it, it's definitely not an uplifting film it's kind of awful in every way but it's told in such a great manner that it just, every time I see this, it makes me wish Swabi would have been able to keep making films. I mean, if you've, if you've seen uh, Stage Fright, The Church, or e even The Sect, they look, I mean, amazing. And then all the stuff after that, he's, the look's gone. His stylistic look is totally gone in his later films. I mean, they're well shot and, and they're good movies, but you don't get this, this brilliance. When, I mean, when I saw this film, I said, wow you know, finally one of Argento's pupils is going to usurp the master. And obviously he quit, so we didn't get that. Um, if um, Cemetery Man is cut, I know they cut some stuff from it. I'm not sure. I honestly have never seen it because I had the laser disc and then I had an imported DVD. So I've, I've never watched the Cemetery Man version. And that's a stupid name. Delamore to Delamore is a fantastic name. This is a great film. Please watch it. Uh, well, I know if you've seen any of uh, Suave's later films, too. I'm curious if anybody else watched any of them. Um, I, I think they're pretty good, just nowhere on this level. And if you haven't seen this, definitely check it out. A fantastic film. We'll see you here next time in Movie Mayhem.